And good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And as always, it's a pleasure to stand before you on this, the Lord's Sabbath day, to honor our Lord and Savior and to edify each other in his holy word. And brothers and sisters, with all that going on in the world today, we have to be spiritually aware. And that's why the lesson today is spiritual awareness. We have to know who we are dealing with. Because Satan and his minions, they are spirits also. You have to know, you have to know who you are dealing with. If it's a holy spirit or an unholy spirit, a clean spirit or an unclean spirit. And contrary to popular belief, no little entity gets inside of you and take over your body and control you. Well, we're going to show you today how those evil spirits, how they do take over a person and have a person doing things contrary to the word of God. And we're going to go ahead and get started in this lesson. Uh, we're going to start this in Mark, the fifth chapter. But also, contrary to popular belief, is Satan and his minions, they work for Jesus also. They work for the Lord. They are not free agents running around just doing whatever they want to do. They can't go no farther than the Lord allows them to go. So we're going to pick this up in Mark, the fifth chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Mark 5 and 1. Go ahead, brother. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gadarenes. Go ahead. And we, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So this man was living in the caves, and he had an unclean spirit. So why did he come out and meet Jesus? This one of Satan's minions. So why would he come out and meet Jesus? Go ahead. Who had his dwellings among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No. Not with chains. And, no, and this man was, the demons had him so tough, they couldn't even bind this man. Put chains and, and, and handcuffs on him. They couldn't do it. Go ahead. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. So no man could control him. That's why they would bind him with chains and, and shackles. But he would break them. Because them spirits had him. But go ahead. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So he, all day and night, he was crying and cutting himself with stones. Them, them, men, them demons were messing with him. Go ahead. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. But when this unclean spirit saw Jesus, he ran and worshipped Jesus. Now, why would this unclean spirit run and worship Jesus? Because even Satan... And his minions know who Jesus is. And they know who they work for. And they know what Jesus can do to them if they don't obey him. But go ahead. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? So he acknowledged that Jesus was the son of the most high God. That Jesus was the son. So he confessed with his mouth who Jesus was. So did that mean he's going to be saved? So that let us know right there it takes more than that. You can't just confess with your mouth. You have to have works to go with that. But go ahead. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of that of the man, thou unclean spirit. So that demon of Jude, he begged Jesus, I adjure you, torment me not. Because they know when Jesus come, he's going to come and all, this, all the unclean spirits are going to be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire was made for Satan and his minions. So he said, I jew you torment me not, but go ahead. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So he said, what is thy name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. So that was many demons in this, uh, influencing this guy, attacking this guy. And they could do that because when Satan was cast out of heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. And a third of and a number you, that can't be counted is a lot. So that's why you got to be careful, brother and sister. If you walk around too long with, with these bad behaviors, you can end up with more than just one demon 
More than just one uh, uh, problem. But go ahead, brother. He besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was there now to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. So, so he besought Jesus that he would not send them out of the country, that he would not send them away. So he, they didn't want to leave this country just like now in, in Chicago, even in Memphis. So much is going on, this prime picking for these evil, these, these, these evil spirits, these unclean spirits. A lot of people out there, they can get into this. So obviously this demon didn't want to leave. Hey, look, Jesus, don't send us out of here. This place is prime picking. <laughs> we can feast. But go ahead. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine that we may enter into them. And you notice they asked for permission even to enter into the swine. They asked for permission because they can't do anything without the Lord's permission. They can't go no farther than the Lord allowed them to go. They asked for their permission. But go ahead, brother. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirit went out. And entered into the swine. So, so Jesus gave them permission. Go out and enter into the swines. Go ahead. And the herd ran violently down a deep, steep, down a steep place unto the sea. They were about 2,000 and were cloaked in the sea. So these, these unclean spirits begged Jesus, don't, don't, don't send us out of the country. Let us go into these swines. They didn't enter into these swines. But they were saved just like they do us. Influencing them and getting in their head. I don't know what they did. I went there. They probably told them, "Swine, you're not a pig. You're a chicken. They're gonna fry you up in the in the skillet." And also let us know. Even these, even the animals, they rather commit suicide than be taken over by these demons. And we just follow them right on. They even said, "Come on with me, okay." But these 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 animals had. Enough sense to know no, this ain't right. So they ran in the river, in, in, the, in the sea, and they choked themselves. Now we all know that spirits are, spirit beings cannot be killed. That's, they cannot die. That's why the Lord made the, a lake of fire to torture them forever. So you know when them, when them swines ran into the sea, they didn't die. That's how you know they wasn't in these swines. These swines ran into the sea, and they just went on by their way. But go ahead, brother. 14. And they that fed the swine fled it, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they went out to see what was done. But, but brothers and sisters, uh, uh, go ahead. 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legions sitting and clothed, and in their right mind, and they were afraid. So the people came, and they saw this guy. Now when Jesus, Jesus told this, these unclean spirits to come out of him, they came out of him. When the people saw him, he was in his what? His right mind. They was influencing his mind. And we're going to show that, brothers and sisters, that's what these unclean spirits do. They influence, they influence your mind. And that's what happened. But let's go up further. Let's go see how Satan possesses Let's go to uh, St. John, the 13th chapter. Go to John 13. We're going to pick it up at 25 and see how Satan possessed people. John 13 and 25. Well, we just read, brothers and sisters, with these unclean spirits that Satan and his minion, they're afraid of Jesus. They have to obey him. And this is a battle that we fight. This is a battle of, for our eternal salvation. We are at war. And when you're at war, you're going to have a lot of battles. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But the key is keep fighting so you don't lose the war. And that's what we are doing. But uh, John 13 and 25, go ahead, brother. He then laying on Jesus' breast said unto him. And this is Simon Peter, go ahead. Lord, who is it? Jesus answered. He it is, to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. So, so Jesus told him, one of y'all are going to betray me. So Peter asked, who is it? And Jesus already knew what was going to happen. He said, he who I give a sop, he is the one, but go ahead. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, 
the son of Simon. So he gave it to Judas. Go ahead. And after the sock, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. So when he gave him the sock, Satan entered into Judas and had him betray Jesus. And Jesus knew what was happening. He knew the exact moment that it happened. But let's see how this Satan entered into Judas. Back up to the, uh, the first uh, uh, 13 and 1. Back up to 1. Let's see just how Satan entered into Judas. Go ahead, brother. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And that's what he did. He loved us until the end. Because he came and he died for us. Even though he was sin free and, the, and we were filthy rags, he still came and died so that we can have a chance to get eternal life. But go ahead. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And that's how Satan got into Judas. Put in his heart, not this heart pump, not, not this blood pump, but his mind. He entered into his mind. But you have to, we are free agents, brothers and sisters. We have thoughts all day long. And we have a choice to either go uh, 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 do whatever comes to our mind or don't. We have, we, have the, we have the option to weigh it out. The Lord gave us that choice. He gave us that choice. But like I say, we are at war. We are at war, and this is a battle, and we cannot fight this battle alone. We cannot fight, fight Satan and his demons alone, his minions. We cannot. But let's, let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. We're not strong enough to do it on our own, so let's see how we can protect ourselves. Ephesians 6, I'm going to pick it up at 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6, go over to Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Because we cannot do it by ourselves. And if you think you can, you're just fooling yourself. And I'm going to show you just what those demons will do to you if you think you can handle them by yourself. Go ahead, brother. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now we have to do, we have to have faith and trust in the power and the might of the Lord. He's the only one strong enough to deal with Satan and these, these uh, unclean spirits. He did it before. I heard people say, I spit in Satan's eye. Which one? He got eyes all over his wings. You said Satan was to walk in here, everybody run out of here right now. No, I spit in his eye. Well, they wanted one of the holiness churches a uh, uh, long, long time ago. And I'm sitting there, and they up, they dancing. I'm like, I mean, what are they doing? Oh, they, they dancing. They stumping on Satan's head. I'm like, stumping on Satan's head? So I got up, I started dancing too. <laughs> what you doing? I said, I'm dancing. That's the same stuff they were doing at the club. You... You sinning. You can't be dancing like that in the church. Like they are. But they stumbling on Satan's head. I like to see them try that. I like to see them try that. But go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But you got to put on the whole arm of God because you can be able to stand. Because Satan is tricky. Satan is very tricky. And Satan been at this game a long time. And we're going we're gonna to show where this war started. He's, he's been at this game a long time. So he, he has perfected his craft. Satan is, Satan is, is so, uh, his gift of gab is so good, he convinced the angels who was in the presence of the Lord to rebel and try to take over heaven. So what chance, so what what chance do these people think they have? They're going to stump on his head. This guy game, he, this guy game is perfected. 
It is perfected. Go ahead, brother. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against spiritual being, even though it might be a flesh and blood person in front of you, but it's that spirit that's influencing that person. That's what we have to be mindful of. And so since we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, conventional weapons are not going to do you any good. I don't care how big your gun is. Because even if you take care of that person that's in front of you, all that demon going to do is go get in the next person, pick up right where that one left off. I hear people say, everywhere I go, people be messing with me, the same old stuff. Yep, because you can't get away from them, not by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, well, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to, to stand. We have to. We have to do all we can. And we got to put on that whole arm of God, not part of it. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your lungs girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And how do you prepare? By studying. When you was in school and you, and you had a test, how you prepare? You, you studied. Now you have to do, you have to study this word, this gospel of peace. And see what it is the Lord wants you to do so you can be strong enough to fight. Go ahead, brother. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And that shield of faith, above all, and those fiery darts of the wicked, it's those lies. And that false doctrine, those little snippets people throw at you. you know, try, try, to, try to get you off your game. Try to rattle you. And each time they do it, that shield of faith come up. Blocking it. Keeping it from getting, getting you. Go ahead, brother. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that helmet of salvation. We have to always keep on in our, on, in our mind what it is we're fighting for. That's why he calls it the helmet of salvation. I'm fighting for my salvation. I'm fighting for my salvation. Okay, no, there's nothing nobody can do to make me turn away from this and get cast in the lake of fire. And that sword of the spirit, which is the word of truth. Because this is a battle. And this, this sword of the spirit is the only thing, only weapon that you can use against Satan. That's the only weapon that you can use. Go ahead, brother. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And praying always, always. With prayer, supplication in the spirit. Always praying, always reading, always studying. I heard people, I heard people, they've been in the word. Oh, I've, been, I've been coming to class for three straight months. I'm strapped. I know pretty, pretty school. I can be a prophet now. And get out there and want to battle and get chewed up. So you got to, you got to always, always. Pray with prayer and supplication. Go ahead, brother. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And that's what we always say before we even come out and teach. We pray that the Lord give us utterance, that we speak his word and not our own. Because my word is worth nothing. My word can't even get you a cup of coffee at McDonald's, let's know salvation. So it's all about what thus said the Lord. So that's what this thing is all about, brothers and sisters. But let's go to, I said, uh, this war has been going on a long time. Let's go to Revelation 12 and see how long this war has been going on. Revelation 12 and 7. Revelation 12 and 7. Twelve and seven, Revelation twelve and seven. Go ahead, brother. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So Michael 
And his, his angels fought with, fought with the dragon or Satan and those angels that he had convinced to try to take over heaven. And go ahead. And prevail not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So, so Satan and his angels prevailed not. And they was kicked out of heaven. And Satan has been trying to get back ever since. Ever since he's been trying to get back to heaven. But go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And then you can go ahead and get all Satan's names. Satan, the devil, a serpent, the, the deceiver. He's the great deceiver, the dragon, all his names here. But, but he was cast out and deceiveth the whole world. Because Satan is on a mission. He's on a mission. That's why they call him the destroyer. He wants to destroy this world again. He did it once. We're going to show you that. And he want to do it again. He's on a mission to do it again. But this time he want to destroy this tower and take everybody with him to the lake of fire. But go ahead, brother. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. So Satan accused, he's been doing this a long time. And that's what he do. They get, in, they get in your head, get you to do something. First thing they do, run. You See, Lord, look. That's your servant. Look at him. Look at him. He's not worthy. He has convinced you to do something, then he leave you out there hanging. That's his job. But go ahead, brother. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. And that's how you overcome with the blood of the Lamb. By coming under the blood. By doing what thus saith the Lord. That's how you under, that's how you overcome Satan. And his, and his attacks on you. But go ahead, brother. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. So rejoice, ye heavens, because Satan is not there anymore. Those angels in heaven don't have to worry about him anymore. He's been kicked down to this earth, but go ahead. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Oh, but woe to us, because this is where Satan and his minions are. And they was kicked out of heaven, Cast to the earth. But they still up to their same old tricks. Same old tricks. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Say no, he has a short time to try to destroy this creation. So he's busy all the time. All the time he's busy trying, trying to uh, accomplish that mission. He have a short time to get it done. That's why that, that, that unclean spirit, oh, Jesus, you come to torment, torment me? And then in other, in other scripture, it tells you, they, he said, you come to uh, torment me before my time? Because they know there's a set time when the Lord is going to come back and take care of them. So they know. So they are about their mission. They are diligent on doing their job. But let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews 12 and 21. So Satan took a third part of the angels with him. Let's see how many of that third, what that third part is. Hebrews 12 and 21. Go ahead, brother, when you get there. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. So it was terrible was the sight that Moses was afraid, but go ahead. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. So that is an innumerable company of angels, a number that cannot be counted. So, and Satan took a third part of that? That's just how many unclean spirits are out here that were cast to this earth. 
We can't see them now because they're under, uh, the Lord put them under a cloak of darkness. So they can't just pop up on us no more like they, like they once could. So if they could, now wouldn't none of us stand a chance? Well, none of us stand a chance. But let's go look. Let's go to Ezekiel, you're the 28th chapter. Let's see why Satan was cast out of heaven. Because, brothers and sisters, we got to be aware of the spirit and who we're dealing with. Because Satan is the master of half truth, half lies. That's how, that's how he got Eve in the beginning. I tell my daughters all the time, deception comes in half truth. I tell, be careful out there, and, and when somebody come to you, I say, no, no uh, uh, guy gonna come up to you. I come up to you, hey, why, why don't you just give me a chance? I ruin your credit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a womanizer. I cheat on you. I'm a beat you. Come on, just let me ruin your life. They're not coming to you like that. But if they do, they know you're going to turn and run. Come get your daddy. But Ezekiel 28 and 12. Go ahead, brother. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now we know what man is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. None, none that we know, but go ahead. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And we know the only people that was in Eden was Adam and Eve. In the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in the tree of life. So Jesus and Satan. So we know this is talking about somebody else. Go ahead. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sawdust, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. And these, 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 all these precious stones, because Satan, Satan was beautiful. When Satan was a light bringer. He had Gabriel's, Gabriel's job. When he, came to, when he came to speak the word of the Lord, he, he came, he, you supposed to be in that awe when you saw him. Because he'll bring the word of the Lord. He bringing God's word to you. So he was beautiful. But that was a problem. Go ahead. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. In the day. That's why Satan was created. That's why they're afraid of the Lord. The Lord created them. Go ahead. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the mountain, the holy mountain of God. So you are the anointed cherub. Now we know this is an angel, because a cherub is an angel. He said, I set thee so, and thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Go ahead. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And we know no man has walked, had been to heaven. No man has seen God. So no man has walked in the midst of the stone and fire. Go ahead. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the days that thou was created. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that was created. And this is Satan. He was perfect in beauty and in wisdom because he had to bring the word of God. God would give him the word. He would bring it to the people. That was his job. That was, his, that was supposed to be his job. But something happened. What happened? Go ahead, brother. Till iniquity was found in thee. Oh, until sin was found in thee. He was beautiful, beautiful and perfect until sin was brought, found in him. What was that sin? Go ahead. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and, and thou that, hast sinned. And that violence is that war in heaven. By the, by the multitude of thy merchandise, all these, all these precious jewels all over him, he all beautiful and stuff. He was filled with violence and tried to take over, take over uh, heaven. He sinned. And what did he do? Go ahead. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. And he, the Lord did. He cast them out of heaven. 
He cast him out of heaven. But go ahead. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, because of his beauty, because of his pride, because of Satan's pride. He, he, he thought he was so beautiful. He was above God. So his pride, that, that was the sin that caused him to be cast out of heaven and to think that he was more than his creator. Go ahead. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. And thou corrupted thy reason, that, 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 they had corrupted thy wisdom by reason of his, of his beauty. He let his looks be more than what was, what was in his head, but what the Lord had told him. Go ahead. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. He said, I will cast thee before kings so they shall behold thee. And Lord, the Lord kicked him, kicked him out of heaven. Because of his beauty. But that was, that was Satan's sin. Pride. His pride. And that pride is a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. And, but let, let's go to Ezekiel 47. Let's go to Ezekiel 47. You finished that, brother? I mean, Isaiah 47. I'm sorry. That was you. <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah 47 and see what the, uh, the Gentiles, what their sin was. Back up to Isaiah 47. We're going to pick it up at 9. Isaiah 47, we're going to pick it up at 9. You know, people always say, you know, the, the, the white man is the devil. He's Satan. I say, well, he's Satan. How, how? Satan, heaven. he fell from heaven to the earth, got up, dusted himself off, and went on about his business. A white man can't fall out of a tree and do that. So how is he Satan? But Isaiah 47 and 9. Go ahead, brother. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children, the widowhood, and shall come unto, upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Okay, so Lord said, this is going to come on you in a moment. In a moment. And this is tell, he telling Babylon this. Because you worship the false gods, but go ahead. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, that thou hast said, None seeth thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. So, so because they trusted in their wickedness, they said, Our wisdom and our knowledge, they, they trusted in their own self, in the knowledge of God. Go ahead, and it said, It perverted thee, go ahead. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. He said, I am, and none else beside so because. They did like Satan. They tried to put themselves above God. They trusted in their own wisdom and their own knowledge. They said, there's none beside me. They, they, tried, they made the same statement that the Lord made. The Lord said, I am God and there's none else. They made the same statement, just like Satan thought he was above God. So they made the same mistake or error or sin that Satan did. And they getting the same punishment. They are gonna get the same punishment that Satan got. But let's go to Isaiah the fourteenth chapter. Isaiah, 